you should take a lesson. Ah, yes, the number one advice people receive whenever they ask a question about skiing. This always bugs me, not because I don't think lessons are useful, but living in Denver, all the resorts around here charge an exorbitant amount of money for lessons. Sure, you can pay $150 for a half-day group lesson, which by the way is not even that accessible to everyone. But I am not a huge fan of this because a three-hour lesson split between up to six people doesn't usually mean you can learn a whole lot. And private lessons, those can often cost as much as a full season pass. At Vail, a private lesson can be more expensive than the Epic Local Pass. But today we are at Monarch, where private lessons are actually quite reasonable. So Peter and I decided last minute that we would go for it. We paid $239 total for two and a half hours with a private instructor. But was it worth it? Let's find out. Hello guys, we are at Monarch today and this is our first time here this season, so I'm super stoked. We actually don't have a ton of time today. We started at about 1 p.m., but they have private lessons available for $239 for both me and my husband. So we decided last minute to do that. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be a great session, even though it's pretty short. I'm super stoked to see you on slopes. I can barely see anything. That reach down right, get this hand over. Like work at that angle. Oh geez. Around? Yeah. You gotta keep the blade. So as you go, like really keep that forward pressure. And you try to bring the tails of the ski up a little. Especially on that inside leg, and then keep that pressure pointing down, and then rotate out of the track. Oh, I don't have to do it as tight as you, right? You don't have to do it as tight as me, no. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, kid. Woo! <laughs> See how you really kept that reach down the hill, uh -huh. and then just getting this shoulder over a little more. I see. We think about what our poles are actually doing, they are an extension of our fingers rather than our arm. Okay. Right? So if we think of like a bird or a bat swing. Yeah. Right? That finger reaching out uh -huh. is a modified finger. So we are just creating that by reaching out and over, right? We're creating more pressure on this ski. I'm creating counter rotation that'll help me bring those things around. I and see. Then I'm moving already to go in the turn before I've even started turning my skis. Yes. Still can't see anything. scared and useless on that double black tree around at Taos, we decided that we really need to work on our tree skiing skills. So we asked our instructor Kirby to take us to some tree runs and give us some pointers. And turns out Monarch is the perfect place to work on that. 
So I've actually only been here once before and I just remember looking at this run right here and thinking, wow, this looks like a cliff. I would never be able to do this. Um, this is back when we were still skiing greens. Um, it's amazing to come back here almost two years later, um, looking at these slopes thinking, yeah, actually that looks fun. We should do it. That feeling is great. Every nine-year-old's favorite run is called Pinball. Okay. Uh, pinball is, was and used to be a uh, creek bed. So we're going to have some nice like kind of half pipey side to side stuff. And then we're nice. going to go down to some really low angle but a little tighter trees. Okay. And work on like looking at those yeah. gaps. Planning through those gaps and kind of shoot where we want to go. Awesome. Sweet. here really working on like spotting those lines trying to connect those C's and D's together full planning on the top or even a little over the top of those bumps keeping our shoulders down the hill and then we'll cruise out kind of a little bit towards the right and stop where it pops up before it goes down again I know, right? But, yeah. but I would get that feeling of like, all right, my legs are going that way, my body's going this way, I plant, and then I kind of jump and turn around, right? Yeah. It's that constant using the momentum of the bumps themselves. And we, you know, once we get that separation, right, we're allowing ourselves to bump with them while staying in control. So going through here, we're going to work on picking routes that we feel safe, but are like, a little bit on the tighter side, trying to avoid okay. just going right down the middle. Yeah. Um, just turning around those trees, right? Treating them exactly like we would on those bogles. We have a big reminder of like, okay, I have to go through this gap, and then we go through this gap. Go through this gap, through this gap. Not too bad. Not too bad. But it gives us that ability to sort of practice on a yeah. small scale what is going to be a little harder on this next run. What is this run called? Uh, this was again part of Great Divide. Uh, over there, that's Snowburn. Over there, that's Picante. Okay. So these, so these are unofficially named uh, either the nacho trees or the dip trees. Oh, these that's are the nacho trees. trees. Yeah. Okay.
to challenge myself a little bit more. So see that lifting of that inside ski right on that jump turn? It keeps us from having to get way out into that wedge to okay. create that angle. Yeah. As long as we get that lift on the inside, then we can rotate more effectively over that outside ski. Those are a good, like, a little tighter, right? Yeah. We're working those little pathways. We're trying to find those grooves where we can be like, all right, I'm going to go through this narrow gap, turn around, then I have another one, and it's all aiming down towards here, right? Yeah. It's that process of seeing the tree run as not just a hole, but like breaking it into parts and then keeping that hole in mind. We are about halfway through our lesson at this point, having done some trees with different tightness and pitch, but nothing too steep yet. So far, these runs are helping me a lot with building confidence, and I am loving it. Monarch is really the perfect place for skiing sparse trees. You can always see a way out of the trees, but it's also not so sparse that it doesn't feel like tree skiing anymore. There are plenty of tree runs that are quite mellow, but we are about to go in some steeper areas in part two of our day at Monarch. Next up, we will be skiing some steeper runs off of Panorama, including my favorite run of the day, JR's. Kirby also challenged us with some tighter lines. I've got to say, it was great watching Kirby's tips back while editing this video. It's a bit like taking the lesson again. All right, that's it for me today. I hope you learned a little bit from my lesson as well. Stay tuned for part two and more tips from Kirby coming soon.